Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. class we were discussing about uh, intramolecular hydrogen abstraction. Um, we saw like uh, from gamma is much more favorable, but we have seen examples where your excited carbonyl can abstract hydrogens even from beta and we have seen from delta even epsilon and from a distant site also. So, in this class what we will do is that we will first we will try to uh, do some examples on intermolecular hydrogen abstraction which we have introduced little bit, but we will see some examples like we take one type of ketone and see how solvent in different solvent it can give different products. Okay, that we will initially we will discuss about that after intermolecular hydrogen abstraction uh, then we will get into our uh, the next class of reaction that is addition to pi system. intramolecular hydrogen abstraction reactions. <coughs> this you can call even as a photo reduction. There are some examples where you can get your carbonyl reduced okay, in intramolecular hydrogen abstraction. We will see that examples also. <coughs> so, what we said that if we have if we can take a benzophenone we have seen this the previous class just I will explain you one more time. If you take a benzophenone and photolyze in presence of benzohydrol, if you photolyze that in presence of benzohydrol, then what you expect? Basically, we say that we have a benzophenone and photolysis it goes to S1, then we have a nice intersystem crossing. to give me a triplet radical right. So, this then can react with the solvent, it can react with my solvent. So, now you know about radical stability and you know that this O dot can pick this hydrogen C H hydrogen or O H hydrogen and you know by based on radical stability it is easy to pick the hydrogen from the carbon connector. So, I get a system like this, <coughs> then we said that this can uh, recombine these two radicals to give me what product? What is the product? Benzpinacol. Yeah. You get nice benzpinacol. Yeah, this is when I do the photolysis in presence of benzhydrol. Okay. If the same intramolecular hydrogen abstraction, if we carry out in toluene, uh, then what happens? See the formation of the product most of the time depends on your solvent also. You have to consider what solvent you are doing this reduction. Take a benzophenone in presence of toluene and you photolyze this. So, 
So, same way I can write to give me my triplet radical. So, this can abstract now photon from Tolibin. So, what I should get then? I will get a two type of radical in this case, two different radicals. Right. So, now <coughs> what these two radicals can do? Just see what these two radicals now can do. <coughs> uh, two radicals. This we have seen that they can recombine this radical to give me. nice by benzyl and this can recombine to give me again benzpinacol and we were saying that this two radicals can also combine, but the, the formation of yeah these are all basically plausible products. Can get this type of system, these are all plausible products, but uh, if you do the reaction, uh, you can more see A and C. Okay. A and C will be formed in large scale, you can see little bit traces of B, but A and B, A and C will be the dominating product. Fine. Now, <coughs> the same reaction if I carry out in the presence of methanol, okay, then uh, we are getting intramolecular hydrogen abstraction. If I have benzophenone, if I do it in presence of methanol. See, you carry out photolysis most of the time in uh, Cholubin. There are some exceptional cases where, like in methanol, aqueous methanol, we do photolysis. Yeah, this part you know that, yeah, anyhow, I will just write it down, which you know it, it gets to <coughs> singlet, then it undergoes a nice intersystem crossing to give you a triplet radical. Now, we have methanol, how this is going to react? You think uh, this C dot, what it can do? You have a methanol, you have like your uh, excited ketone and pi star. So, your C dot can abstract an hydrogen from methanol from where? C S 3. Okay. Do not abstract the hydrogen from your OH. Eh? Sorry, sir. I got a two radical system. Now, what this is going to do? You know that this will recombine, that you know it gives a benzapinacol, that should not be a problem. So, 
So, what this can do? Do you think it will recombine? If it recombines, what you end up? You end up with the glycol. They are very rare, ne? taking a methanol and doing photolysis to glycol. It does not happen like that. Then what happens? You think what is the easiest part it can do? This radical. Yeah, it gives formaldehyde. Okay. That you can get nicely. You see formaldehyde. Is there is any possible that these two radicals can recombine? How they recombine? How they can recombine? You want that this C S 2 to go and attack this C, make like phenyl, phenyl C, C S 2 O H. This is, yeah, this is like highly reactive radical. Want you to do that or is there is any way, any other possible you can think about? You have studied this reaction. See that is what ne, uh, always if you write pH, we never think about that it is an aromatic benzene. Ne? See this system always you know that if you have a CS 2 OH they always go and react with your para of your aromatic ring because you have a carbonyl system. See that is what when you write pH you are in much of your trouble. can get nicely this. Okay. This happens rather than your C S 2 O H attacking here and this hydrogen can go off. me this product. So, that is why I say like uh, when you change your solvent, okay, it has solvent as deciding factor on the products. Yeah, in all the cases if you see you are getting your benzophenol, which is your reduced and CC bond formation of your benzophenol. But apart from that in every case it the other products depends upon the solvent you are considering. Okay. Now, we will take the same reaction okay, and do it in isopropanol, see what should be the major product. What do you expect? If you take a type of benzophenone and do the photolysis in isopropanol. Benzophenone. I am just taking a simple reaction and doing all the chemistry. So, what is the what product can you expect from this? Any guess? If I give the reaction like this in isopropanol in benzophenone and ask you to find out the product. Any guess? Yeah, you you get the solvent, you get acetone, right? And then you get benzophenol. So now you know, right? How it happens? Just check it up. So system like this 
plus you will end up with the you can have like this now right what happens is that another mole another molecule of your benzophenone <coughs> comes and picks this hydrogen because the formation is to make your acetone the, the criteria is that it is going to form a stable product acetone that's why it comes and picks this hydrogen to give you again so you will get like benzopinacol and then from here you might end up with your acetone and plus you will end up with a See, for this type of reactions, yes, you have to do with isopropanol and everything. Um, if you, if for example, like uh, I have system which can do very good hydrogen donor type of systems, you can add to the, like I can take benzene, my benzophenone and I add one mole of my hydrogen donor uh, reactants, then also the chemistry works very nice. I will just give you a very good example for that just you guys figure out the product what it should be i have a benzophenone i'm taking a system like this cyclohexene and to fertilize so what products you can write down just write down the products so one you get your benzopinacol that is common in most of your solvent then what are the other things You can get a dying system, right? Like two. See, <coughs> basically, what you are doing is that you are creating a. See, but I prefer you guys to start writing this way. So, where I can abstract the hydrogen? <coughs> Allylic. So, I end up with a <coughs> nice allylic radical, right? it is stable. So, this can now give you This gives me type of cyclohexadiene. Right, I can think of this product. <coughs> then you can expect combination, right? Because your your radicals are stable. This radical line, they can combine. So, you can get this this type of products. See why I am uh, writing this um, old like different solvents that you should get. See when I write a system <coughs> normally uh, in your exam or in your question paper, most of the reaction the solvent will be there. Okay, I am not going to write for addition to pi system without solvent. 
Okay, I'm going for alpha cleavage. I'm not going to do the chemistry without solvent. Most of the time, I will be giving you the solvent, right? Then you should be in a mind to know that <coughs> whether this reaction undergoes an intramolecular hydrogen abstraction. That time only the real problem comes. Whether it goes an alpha cleavage or it will go an addition to pi system or it really interacts with your solvent. So, that is why I am just putting you, uh, letting you that these are all solvents are very good for hydrogen donor chemistry. So, whenever you see these solvents, you should think whether there is some reactivity going with your solvent as well as your reactant hmm, when you do photolysis, because you know that you are going to take solvent in large scale. So, you should think about that all the time. Clear? <coughs> Just you can uh, write this product. Uh, we are, I have a system like this. See, like that, I am going to give you most of the time in the exam. I give, I give a system like this. I say it is photolysis in presence of isopropanol. So, what you do most of the time, you will forget this solvent, you will never think of this solvent. So, what you do uh, after seeing this, you will do an alpha cleavage here, right. You will, say, you will immediately you will do an alpha cleavage, you will make a radical here, you will make a radical here and then you do alpha cleavage chemistry, okay. See, if this whole chemistry is done in benzene, okay, whatever you are doing is right. If I do this photolysis in benzene, yes, then you do an alpha cleavage. You get a radical, then you write alpha cleavage product. But you see the chemistry is, is now done in isopropanol. So, if you see the major product, can you write the major product? It will be intramolecular hydrogen abstraction that is also from the solvent. So, here solvent decides what chemistry it should be. So, this will be a photo reduced product. See, I have given this question for last three semesters, okay? same question and I have not got <coughs> this answer at all. Most of the time I got only alpha cleavage product, people just write alpha cleavage. So, be careful, that is why I say that, that is why I took like so much of time for you to explain that why solvents like I took in different solvents, isopropanol, toluene, uh, methanol. If you come across this type of solvents, you, you put your mind that some reaction should be with your solvent also, okay. That is why I okay. Um, <coughs> that is about uh, intramolecular hydrogen abstraction reactions, intermolecule. Yeah, we, you, because it likes to now abstract isopropanol. Instead of if it is a benzene, okay, then this reaction will favor alpha cleavage. If it is toluene, then you can see trace of alpha cleavage coming out. But the, again, the major product will be your hydrogen abstraction. So, it depends upon the solvent whether it favors it. Hmm? So, um, th that is more about your uh, second class of reactions which we are discussing on hydrogen abstraction. Okay. So, you have seen hydrogen abstraction from beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, distance sites and even from the intermoleculars. Okay. So, this is about uh, cleavage reaction and 
hydrogen abstraction reaction. These are main important two reactions. Okay, uh, if it is more like a single reactant, if it is a single reactant, you should be your care should be that whether it is a alpha cleavage or it is a intermolecular hydrogen abstraction or intermolecular. Okay, now we will go to next class of reaction that is addition to pi system. This is your third reactions we said. Yeah, we there are five reactions right in carbonyl chemistry. <coughs> Main five reactions. See, if you have a benzaldehyde, and if you have an alkene like this, okay, benzaldehyde and alkene, when they photolyzed, I will tell you the scientist name, when they did the photolysis, okay. they got this product. Okay. This is you can call this as oxytane and the yield of this reaction was 90 percentage. Just you take a benzaldehyde, you take an alkene, it gave you this uh, product oxytane. Okay looks like to be an sort of 2 plus 2 addition of your carbonyl and alkene, right? if you plainly look like that. This reaction was first um, did by I think Paterno and Chiffy, yeah, Chiffy. the year 1909, if someone is interested in knowing this. Okay. Uh, he, he is the guy who first absorbed. Uh, I said Norwich type. Norwich absorbed that reaction. Norwich type one. Norwich type two. Paterno Chaffee absorbed this reaction. 1909. Okay, first. And after that, I think it's Bucci who studied the mechanism of this reaction. Okay, he did a mechanistic investigation. It was around 1954. So, from after this time, this reaction now, like people started calling them as Paterno Bucci reaction. So, you can call this as a photocyclic addition of your ketone, people call this as a paterno bucci reaction, addition to your pi system, okay. this comes under addition to your pi system, but normally this reaction is famously called as paterno bucci reaction. Okay. Now, we will see how the mechanism, how this reaction really goes, the mechanism part. So, nice reaction, you can see the yield is 90 percentage. and it has led to a big chemistry after that. And benzaldehyde, okay. you can photolyze this, again it goes to S1, then it undergoes a type of intersystem crossing to give you a T1 state, that is your radical should be Like a triplet radical, right? See, this is the excited. So the chemistry happens from this.
and then I have my ground state molecule that is my alkene. I have an excited state ketone which is in the n pi star triplet and you have a ground state alkene. Do not forget that. Most of the time you forget that it is not a ground state alkene. You think that is also in the excited state and that you should be little bit because see alkene also can do chemistry. They also do cis trans isomerization all that, but I am not exciting that alkene, I am specifically exciting my ketone. You can write like two ways, you can say that I can add the direction it is like my O attacking I get it this product ok or I can say that I can get this product also right. See uh, now you should be like uh, more uh, most of the time I was using my triplet as a radical ok dot dot. Now I have specifically used as a spin ok. So see now what happens? What it can happen now? Huh? It can cyclize. Yeah because it cannot cyclize right now because you have like two radicals that is why I just like triplet, they cannot make a bond now, so they cannot cyclize. So, uh, so before cyclization what happens? It undergoes an intersystem crossing, ok. See it does not do spin and you call it as an intersystem crossing where it can convert from triplet to singlet. You will know why it is important that I am doing this inter-system crossing later on. I can directly write it, but I am saying it undergoes inter-system crossing. You will know why it is later. Then it undergoes a cyclization. So, then which is the major product? This one is major product ok. <coughs> because you are uh, talking with respect to the stability of your radical right because here you are getting a type of a tertiary type of radical and in this case you are getting a secondary type of radical yes. So, so this will be 90 percentage and this is the remaining 10 percentage which they got. See so far what we were doing is that we were talking about only one species in alpha cleavage or intramolecular except in inter other ways we were always concerned about my ketone, what is my ketone is doing whether it is goes to singlet or triplet whether it decides product or not. In this case you have another species along the system that is your alkene, whether this alkene really have any effect on your chemistry, whether it can decide any product formation ok. Yeah, 
So, this alkene decides most of the time like the chemistry of your products. Um, so, if you take alkene there are two type of alkenes we can segregate one uh, electron rich alkene okay, where an alkene which is having an donor substituent another is electron like deficient alkene where you have an electron withdrawing substituent. We take these two alkenes and see how that reacts to your system. Okay. For example, I am taking addition to electron rich alkene that is an alkene having a donor substituent. See this part is uh, it's little bit interesting if you know this. Huh? I want to I take an ketone okay, acetone in this case. I take a type of trans uh, cis alkene, uh, but I am going to use an electron donating substituent like it is better like I will use a methoxy or okay, any alkoxy we can use because it is a very good electron donor substituent. Then if I write this product the oxytane, see interestingly what I get is I get this okay, and I also get this. I am taking only a cis alkene. Okay. I am getting a product like this. So, what it means? The reaction is not stereo specific. Okay. The reaction is not. See, ketone addition to an electron rich alkene, the reaction is not stereo specific. See, this will be very helpful when you write the reactions. Okay, rich alkenes are not. We, we will come and find out the reason why it is later. Same way, if I take a ketone, I react with a system like this. Okay, I get an oxytane. Now what it says? I get both the products. So what it says? What you conclude from this? First time you conclude the reaction is not stereo specific. Here what you say? The reaction is also not regio specific. So, this is very important part when you take an ketone okay, and uh, do a reaction with an electron rich alkene, the reaction is not stereo specific and the reaction is not regio specific. You get products like this, okay. keep that in mind whenever you do any examples. Clear? Same way if I take addition to electron deficient alkene or electron poor alkene whatever you call it electron deficient alkene alkenes sorry it should be alkenes then what happens. So, I take a ketone Say I am going to use cyano. 
a very good electron withdrawing substituent, right. Previous case it was methoxy which is electron donor and this time I am using electron withdrawing substituent. So, that the alkene becomes electron deficient, right. Now, what happens is same oxytane, I get the same oxytane. I get only this product. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, that is nice. So, it is good that you are following the class. So, I get only this product. So, that says the reaction is highly stereo specific. See, the chemistry is now alkene is coming into picture. Um, so, the reaction is. I do not want to call highly stereo specific. Anyhow, you remember that the reaction is stereo specific. Yeah, I will just come. Yeah, there are there, yeah, other way around, but it is stereo specific reaction. Only you get one product, okay. Yeah, that can be this way when you have that also is possible. If I take same way like an electron. like this and do the chemistry, okay. I get only this product, I get only this product, I do not get other product, okay. So, it is very nice that this, uh, what it says now, the reaction is It is region specific. See this, this is the uh, addition, beauty of this addition to pi systems. Uh, if you take an electron rich alkene, okay, uh, <coughs> your reaction is not stereo specific and the reaction is not even regio specific. But in other way around, if you take an electron deficient alkene, the reaction become more stereo specific and regio specific. Okay. <coughs> just going back one more time, like I am just getting back little bit here, hmm, I, the previous example, okay, which is your electron rich alkene. <coughs> apart from this two products, okay, yeah, you remember that this is uh, apart from that in this reaction, if you do a reaction, you can see this also as a product. That means, I am taking a cis, I also end up with a trans. <coughs> Same way in electron deficient also, you get the cis and trans. In this case also I get <coughs> this type of product. Apart from your regio specific and stereo specific uh, which we are talking about, you have to remember that you get one of this product. <coughs> why I am writing that you will know when I explain with respect to mechanism why this product helps us to know. Hmm? So, <coughs> any guess? why now electron rich alkene does your reaction uh, non stereo specific, but when you go for an electron deficient it goes uh, stereo specific. I, I, <coughs> I thought like you will give one good explanation that is what I was looking for. That is why I wrote that uh, product so that uh, this product. So, that with that idea you might give some explanation. <coughs> Reversible, yes.
less reactive, more selective, does not get it. Ne? Yeah, it is better that you think, that is what yeah, I want. It can rotate also, rotate yeah, yeah, electron deficient, <coughs> may, <coughs> electron deficient also I can make one for dye radical na, <coughs> if I want. Anything related to excited states or something can you think about? <coughs> because normally we studied that, what we studied. When a reaction becomes uh, stereo specific, from which state it has to do chemistry? Huh? If it happens from singlet excited state, then you can say that reaction goes more stereo specific and when you go for a triplet state, you say the reaction becomes <coughs> And it goes radical so that the reaction loses. And see, that's what I was expecting from you guys that you uh, think. But <coughs> in in this case, it's not like absolutely right what you are thinking about. Okay. See why you are getting this alkene. Anything? Why you are getting this alkene, which is cis? Why you are getting cis and trans alkene? I am not exciting my alkene at all, right. I said that I am not exciting my alkene, I am just exciting my ketone. Okay. You want to say that bi radical breaks? Um, have you heard about this energy transfer reactions? Uh, like where your <coughs> compound can go from the ground state to singlet excited state. Then from singlet excited state, it can transfer its energy to another system. That system can then do the photochemistry. Why cannot we can think, J just I am giving an idea, why cannot we think like that. <coughs> like your ketone goes to an S1, okay. from S1, the ketone can transfer its energy to alkene, okay. then alkene can do a cis and trans isomerization, that is also possible, right? one way of doing energy transfer chemistry. Yeah. <coughs> uh, say, uh, okay, if you take, see we, we have to put all these questions before we are going to understand really. Hmm? We are going to see this, why this happens by using energy diagram and orbital picture. Before that, we will put our mind. <coughs> If I increase the concentration of this electron rich alkene, if I increase the concentration of this electron rich alkene, the reaction slowly tends to be stereo specific. Is, is this gives any clue for you? If I slowly increase the concentration of my electron donating alkene, okay. Well, first I take 1 is to 1, then I keep on increasing the concentration. Once the concentration keeps on increasing, the reaction is tending towards to be more stereo specific. Tells you something? Energy transfer. Uh, so, so your chemistry happens mostly from singlet. Can you think like that? Uh, one more thing I told you that uh, there are many, there, there are examples okay, uh, in which you have seen chemistry happening from only the non-bonded electron of your oxygen atom. Uh, there are some chemistries which, say, which have been initiated by your, what is another electron we are talking about in your n pi star, one is your non-bonded electron okay, on the oxygen atom, another your pi electron which is distributed between your carbon and oxygen. We have never talked about that electron. So far, we have not any dealt any reaction based on that. There are some reactions that can also induce, <coughs> okay, that part is also there. Um, so, now you have left with a lot of uh, choice in this in thing. Uh, if you are in the stage, how you are going to think it? Like uh, the question I asked is that, if I take an electron rich alkene, the first question I ask you is that why it is stereo specific, not stereo specific and not radio specific. Immediately if I go for my electron deficient, the whole reaction becomes stereo specific and radio specific, why it is? 
that is the question first I asked. For that I said, see uh, there is not only one product, there is one cis and trans can also occur, whether that gives you any clue. The secondly, I, I gave you a, one more thing is that as I increase the concentration of my alkene slowly, okay, uh, whether the, the reaction tends to be stereospecific. Okay. Uh, and another clue I said to you is that there are some chemistry which are initiated by your pi star carbon. Okay. Uh, n pi star may we have seen only non bonded electron initiating the reaction. There are some reactions which are initiated by your pi star carbon. So, that also we have to uh, consider. <coughs> So, what we will do is that uh, initially we will take an uh, any clue, any anyone has any idea just what <coughs> okay. So, what we will do then we will take electron rich alkene okay, and start understanding first how the reaction becomes stereo specific. First, we will take an uh, energy diagram of this, just as a sort of energy diagram. So, I am going to draw about my n pi star. Okay. So, I will have a non bonded electron here, I have a pi star. Okay. I have my electrons like this. Okay, it's an n pi star. Uh, n pi star system. Okay, fine. For my carbon here. Um, and then shall I draw for my um, electron rich alkene? If the electron in rich alkene is there, how you how you expect their pi pi star to be there? An alkene with my donor. So the pi pi star basically tends to be like this. Sorry, not no electrons there because it's a ground state. So this should be a energy diagram, right? See, I have drawn for my carbon here. I said that my chemistry in this case will be my n pi star chemistry. So, I would we know this how n pi star looks because you have a non bonded electron in your oxygen atom and you have a pi star. And then I have drawn for my alkene that is electron donating alkene. So, I have just kept my energy little bit higher than your n pi star. Okay. Now, uh, with this energy, I will just close this section, okay, so that you can put your mind. Huh? And uh, after for after our next class, I will teach you how it goes around. Yes. So we'll stop up to this. <coughs>